All right, so today we're looking at solving by graphing. Uh, this is going to rely pretty heavily on the review from yesterday. Uh, I'm going to just kind of show, show you the shortcuts. So if you don't understand how to graph from yesterday, go rewatch that video and ask any questions about that. Um, if not, here we go. We'll just persevere. Um, yesterday, we graphed by making tables that look something like this, x and y. Um, today, we're going to kind of kip, skip that step. I'm going to show you how. So first, let's go ahead and graph the top line, y equals 1 half x minus 3. Is that in slope-intercept form or standard form? It's going to be in slope-intercept form because it's currently solved for y. We have y all by itself equals 1 half x minus 3. The generic form for slope-intercept form is y equals uh, mx plus b, where m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. Take a second to remember that slope means the change in y over the change in x. Meaning, how do we change vertically compared to how do we change horizontally? So let's go back to this example. How are we changing vertically? Well, for every 1 we go up, we go over 2. So plus 1, plus 2 and so on and so forth. Notice the b is the y-intercept. So where is our y-intercept here? In this problem, it's negative 3. So let's go down to negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Notice that's the place where this line is going to cross the y-axis. All right. Now let's use our slope to find the next point. Well, we have a rise. Sometimes the change in y, change in x is called rise over run. So in this case, we rise plus 1, and we run plus 2. There's our next point. We can do it the other way as well, so long as we're consistent. So in this case, we're rising in negative 1, and then we're going to run a negative 2 as well. There we go. We have a line. Brilliant. By the way, I'm not a particularly big strickler about straight lines. Uh, if you are, that's totally fine. Um, great. Either's okay. All right. Next, we have standard form. Standard form is written ax plus by equals c. Notice this one is solved for c, which is the constant. If I were to try to take a slope-intercept form to standard form, we could. But we could also take a standard form to slope-intercept form. Um, in this case, our standard form is 3x plus 2y equals 2. Now, to graph an equation in standard form, we have two options. We could rewrite this into slope-intercept form, or we could graph it straight from here. Um, I'm going to just quickly show you how to change, take it into a uh, slope-intercept form. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, and I'm probably not even going to use it, but I'm just going to demonstrate it just in case. So we end up with 2y equals 2 minus 3x divided by 2. We get y equals negative 3 half x plus 1. We could use that equation to graph, but I'm just going to show you how to do it directly from standard form um, because that's the stuff that should be new to you. Okay. Let's go ahead, purple, and graph this straight from standard form. The way I recommend to do it is find Find the intercepts, specifically where the graph crosses the x and y axis. The best way to do that is to plug in 0. So let's plug in 0 for x first. 3 times 0 plus 2y equals 2. 
um, that's the same thing as 2y equals 2, or y equals 1. Easy enough to see. Um, so where does that cross the x-axis? Well, when x is 0, y is 1, meaning this is our y-intercept. It's going to be that point right there. Similarly, we could do the same thing for y this time. 3x plus 2 times 0 equals 2. We go ahead, that gives us 3x equals 2, x equals 3 halves. Good. Well, let's make that a point. x is 3 halves when y is 0. So let's go plug that in. It's going to be right there. Notice it's kind of in between 1 and 2 because that could be written as 1 and a half. All right. Let's connect the dots. We've got our line. Draw it out. Okay. So, I just realized I made a mistake. Something wasn't adding up to me. I did my fractions wrong. Let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to erase this line. This dot. Oops. Let's go ahead and put the dot in the correct place. This should be x equals 2 thirds. So our dot should be more like right there. That makes more sense to me. I was doing that even in the moment, and I was like, this doesn't feel right. So notice, our lines cross at one point. There we go, that's our solution. How, do, how should we name the solution? Let's go ahead and call it 2, negative 2. Notice we go over 2, down 2 to get to it. Your answer should always look like this. Okay? One other thing I want you to know for this particular lesson is how to verify these answers manually, meaning without graphing. Consider number one on your homework. 5 fourths x plus 3 and 1 fourths x minus 1. This is number one on the homework. Let's go ahead and set them equal to each other. Let's go ahead and solve this. When we subtract 1 fourth, subtract 1 fourth x, we end up with 1x minus plus 3 equals negative 1. x equals negative 4. Okay, now let's graph these two lines really quick and see what we get. Ooh, that line's particularly egregious. Let's try again. Okay, 5 fourths x plus 3. We're going to start at point 3. We go up 5, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, we're running into their problems from last time. Let's go ahead and go down this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. We can go ahead, connect the dots. Good. Let's graph our other line. I'm going to pick a different color. Let's go red. 1 fourth x minus 1. Well, we start at 1. We rise 1. We go over 4. We can go down 1 and go over 4. Oh, boy. Look, our lines cross. They connect at that point right there. What is that point? It's negative 4, negative 2. Notice our x values match. Meaning we're on the right track. Now we have one number here. How can we pair them? 
Well, let's go figure out what y equals. y equals 1 fourth x minus 1. Well, we can plug in negative 4 for that, which gives us y equals negative 1 minus 1 or negative 2, which is the point that we got when we graphed. Hey, it all connects together. All right, as always, let me know if you have questions.